The Friday Rugby Preview with Stuart Cameron. Hello and welcome to the Friday Rugby Preview. Robin Purdy joining me this week again. And the big news from last week in Clubland was Peebles getting promotion by winning National 2 thanks to a big 67-12 win at Aberdeen Grammar. And they got the bonus point victory they needed to give them an unassailable lead at the top. And they'll be playing National 1 Rugby next season. Well, Robin, that was uh, the big news this week for sure as far as Borders teams were concerned. Certainly was and great to see. Congratulations, the Peebles uh, and in, resound- in a resounding manner as well 60 odd points uh, talk about a way to take the pressure off you know get some I think well, I think Aberdeen scored first but then they obviously hit their straps and, and got right into it and yes a, a big old bus journey back down the road I would imagine but no they've and you've, you know they've gone up there and they've done it without two of their most influential players if you like as well Matty Carrier and Ross Wolfenden so yeah brilliant been great all season they've been you know a pleasure to cover the times the times I've been there and yeah huge congratulations to them they've done this against some really big teams as well I mean Falkirk Newton Stewart they're all great size last Wade some great rugby from them this season but they finished at the top of the pile oh yeah it's been it's been a tough it's been a tough division as you say they're you know decent teams in there that have had a you know they've had a bit of a ding dong against each other until a couple of them fell away towards the latter end but yeah yeah, that just makes it all the sweeter I think you know they've they've done it when the pressure's come on none more so than at Kirkcaldy a few weeks ago you know and that you know they've not run away with the division you know they've not done an air they've done it you know they've, they've had to go to the end and that's to their internal credit yeah I mean that Kirkcaldy match uh just to set the scene, of course, uh, going into injury time, they were two scores behind. They had to score a couple of tries. They did through Matty Carrier. And, uh, you know, that certainly showed the character. And, of course, that's what's what's made it all happen at Aberdeen because without that, they would have been gone another week. Yeah, that was the that that was the the big one. And I think they came they came under the cosh a wee bit of home in the draw at times uh, against Newton Stewart as well, I think. So, yeah, they, they've toughed it out when they've needed to. Well, Hoyk beat Dundee 36 points to nil away from home to progress to the semi-final where they'll play Curry on Melrose Sevens Day and in the League Cup, Berwick bowed out at the hands of Borough Muir in a game played at Marside instead of Megatland. So, uh, mixed fortunes there. Yes, don't think Hoyk were ever going to come in under any real danger at Dundee to nil any team is a good good result. And, yeah, I don't think there's ever any doubt of a banana skin when you've seen the team and the squad that Hoyk sent up there. My word, it was it was fully loaded. They were leaving nothing to chance. But yeah, the double remains on for Hoyk and Berwick have remained in their league and that's been the absolute main thing. To have gone further than the cup would have been a, a cherry on top. But, you know, Berwick's work is done. So turning to this weekend then, and it's the start of the Inter-District Championship with Edinburgh hosting the South and a game to be played tomorrow at Stony Hill in Musselburgh. Here's the squad at uh, fullback Kirk Ford, wingers Josh Welsh and Callum Anderson from Selkirk, Andrew Mitchell and Dwayne Patterson, the centre partnership. We've got Andy Tate at scrum half, Aaron McComb, the vice captain, also from Selkirk at a standoff. In the pack... A front row from Hoyk. Sean Muir, captain. Fraser Rennick and Nicky Little in there. Andrew McComb and Keith Melbourne, four and five. Bruce McNeil, six. Angus Dunn, seven. And Jay Linton, eight. And, uh, well, it's a very strong bench, isn't it? Russell Anderson, Grant Shields, Ross Graham, Dalton Redpath, Callum Rennick are the forwards. You've got Douglas Crawford, Struan Hutchison and Frankie Robson as well in the back. So um, it's a pretty tasty squad. It's a strong squad, as you say. It's a really strong bench. There's some grunt on that front row. They're to come on off the bench anyway. That's for sure. And yeah, it's a it, it's it's a it, it's a strong squad. I think if we're being honest, I don't think anybody. You know, when as we do, and that's part of the fun of the district championship. You know, the the group chat is all about pick us, pick your starting eleven, all that kind of stuff. I don't think anybody would been bang on the money uh, this time. But it's a it's a strong squad. And but then again, you look at you know. I've not seen Edinburgh's named squad yet, but you you know I think the their wider training squad was every single player that's ever picked up a rugby ball in the last <laughs> ten years in the it was big wasn't it the district of Edinburgh. But you look at some of the names in there; they're going to have a they're going to have a strong squad out. You know, Robbie Chalmers and Charlie Bray, and of course the Musselburgh guys, the Badenhorsts and the Paul Bogies, who were in the South set up last year. Who Musselburgh now, of course, fall within 
under the Edinburgh umbrella. So it's going to be it's going to be a tough game up there on Saturday. Tell you what was very interesting as well because uh, as I say, if I was picking my fifteen, it probably wouldn't have been that. Um, and it, it was good because this afternoon I had a long, long chat with Bruce McNeil, who of course is player coach uh, with the South. He's wearing the number six jersey, and um, we were actually going over the whole team and how it's picked. And obviously, well, I'm not going to go into detail here because that's going to help Edinburgh. But the fact that he took the time and the trouble to to go through every single position and why they were picked and how well they've done at training it put a new perspective on it for me because we're punters we look at the matches etc we don't really get involved in the nitty-gritty the training days and it's clear that like last year with Dwayne Patterson that some players have come through the training system with flying colours and that's what's given them the edge oh yeah and you know, we we're all we're all armchair quarter. You know, everybody's an armchair quarterback, aren't they? Us and us included. And absolutely, there there will be reasons for all the inclusions. And congratulations to all the players that are named in the squad as well. And yeah, that th- there will absolutely be reasons. And Graham Dodds is always a big advocate. For example, if you you know you you just get your best players on the pitch. And if there has to be a positional change to get somebody in, then there's a positional change. So yeah, there might be a bit of that. But no, it, it it's a strong squad. It's a strong twenty three. And you know they'll be looking to get off to a flyer. Well, one of the players that I would have selected in the squad, but uh, likely to play uh, some part in the next few weeks, is young teenager from Kelso, Archie Barber, who I spoke with at training this week. Yeah, no, it's been good fun, just stepping up in senior rugby and everything's going well Kelso, come up into the Prem, I think we've done ourselves proud. So came here after being at school and then fit in, the boys were nice and then it just came quite naturally. So I think after our first few games at the start of the season, I don't think anyone would have thought we'd be top four in playoffs, but we've come along and we've done ourselves proud and getting to that semi-final just showed what we can do and it's been good. Especially playing with the lads, plenty of friends, just couldn't be any better to be honest. It's been good having experienced lads like that in the squad and then I can't imagine the amount of Kelso people will be here supporting that and it'll just be good to be playing that in their home ground. So. Like even our away games, we seem to pull in a great crowd. Just, it's been amazing, yeah. Hopefully something will come off it in the future, but just now I'm just going to enjoy it and see how it goes. Archie Barber. Well, we're covering the Edinburgh v South game from half past two on Rugby Radio tomorrow. You and Dale in the commentary box, and uh, certainly one you've been looking forward to. Oh, yeah, it, it was great to have it back last year, the Inter-District Championship. It's, it's almost got a, a new impetus this year because it's the it's the old school way of doing it. It's a round robin. Everybody plays everybody, and yeah, it's it's just got a great end, almost end the season feel. And you know the play the players that are involved in it across all four squads. You know, it looks like everybody's put their put their hand up and want to be involved, and it's it's just great to see. And yeah, very much looking forward to getting up to Stony Hill there on Saturday. And I was as I was going to say, it's uh, you know we look at last season. And- on paper, you would have thought Caledonia Reds, um, very difficult to get a team together and training sessions, but they, fair play to them, they came out on top. They're the ones with the trophy. They're the ones that everyone's got to shoot at. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And again, you, you look at their squad and, and, and you think, well, who, who are the who are the clubs up there? Uh, and how well have they done this season? You know, Aberdeen, for example, and Dundee. But they seem to have done more of a, almost a sort of state of origin thing and you look at some of the names I mean there's three from Curry right in their top top performers Sam Cardosi for a start you know you're a, a big fan a, a massive massive fan of him massive fan DJ Ennis the centre brilliant player James McCaig the Curry winger but he's got a couple of Harriets lads in there you know Ali Johnson and Malachi Keo and Glenn Bruff from Gala you know along with the you know the guys from Sterling and the guys from Falkirk and yeah that you know the players that came together last season were fully deserving of the victory and nobody should be fooled by the fact that Cali have you know players from slightly further down the divisions because there's some good operators and they you know they obviously you know they all it's like they you know they take great pleasure in the fact that they might be perceived as being underdogs or in some way you know the poor relation for a bit and and, and you know that obviously gives them a bit of a, a, a you know a bit of a boost and anybody writing them off again this season do it at your peril. Well, tomorrow in National League 2, it's the final match for Berwick against Las Wade at Scremerston, but Berwick aren't seeing this as a dead rubber, and as forwards coach Paul Pringle told us, they still have targets to aim for. As usual with these games against Las Wade, you know, we're expecting a real tough encounter. Um, there's usually very little um, in these, you know, usually one score will settle it either way. We're very unfortunate not to get the win up there earlier in the season, but... You know, we're, we're looking to put it right this weekend and just finish on a, a bit of a high note. 
I mean, there's still the opportunity for us to go above Kirkcaldy and Stirling County. You know, could we get a win and the other results going the right way? So that's certainly the the target for us. Um, moving on from last week, you know, just really disappointing. We played against Burham Muir in the Cup. We played really good rugby for, you know, large parts of the game. Unfortunately, there was about a kind of 7 to 10 minute window where we felt a little bit unfortunate the first try we conceded. Um... But then after that, I mean, all credit to Burham Muir. They, they played it fairly uh, fast and loose, got the ball wide early in a, a seven-minute spell where the, the ruck speed, you know, was was really sharp. We weren't experienced enough to just kind of slow it down and they got three, another three quick tries. Um, and although we, you know, we pulled three back, we, we just came up short. So another painful one for us, but we, we need to take the experience away from that just in terms of how we... How we manage games and how we regather ourselves after after a setback. But look at that. There's been you know a lot of those kind of occasions this season. Um, key for me is that we take all those points, we learn from them, and we move on. And you know we we start already looking to to build towards next season. So in terms of team news for Saturday, Liam Robson's back at nine. Uh, Jack Webster back at ten. We've got Darren Goodfellow come back into the front row, which is good, and club captain Ali Greaves available again this week. So, yeah, we've a we've a really strong strong squad. Um, we're we're looking to definitely finish the season on a on a high note, and then we can we can take stock and build for next season. So, no such thing as a dead rubber when Paul's involved. No, Paul was a great Paul's been a great competitor as a as a player. He played played a long time at Jed and. Yeah, a hardy, a hardy character. So yeah, you, you know, they're, they're, they're not, it's not going to be a kind of end of season, an end of season sort of carnival, if you like. They're going to, they're going to have a go, and they've had some good ding dongs down the years. Uh, Berwick did a number on last week, a game that we covered a couple of seasons ago, I think it was when last week had already won. But yeah, Berwick, Berwick put them away quite, quite comfortably there. But yeah, last week they're, they're a strong outfit. They're, they're, they're absolutely a Peter Wright team. Uh, I've been really impressed with our game when I've seen them this season and tough assignment for Barrick but it'll be a good game down there and a word about Colin Young because he's hanging up yeah. his coaching whistle um, at the end of the season and my goodness what what an innings he's had oh what a, what a stalwart I mean you, you think across all the clubs in the borders there are there are some great stalwarts across all the clubs but he, he's got to be right up there you know he, from my memory, he was he was playing for Berwick first when I'm sure he was a boy, you know, probably 17, certainly 18. He certainly went straight from under 18 into the first team and he was good enough to have a, a, a stint a, a stint at Melrose as well. And he's obviously played at Berwick for so long and then gone into coaching and some of the things they've achieved, you know, a lot of the things they've achieved with him being there, whether in a coach and a playing capacity. And, you know, you, you, you know, down that neck of the woods, you, you just can't say, you know, enough good things about him. Well, tonight there's two Border League games on, starting at the Green Yards with Melrose against Kelso. We can hear, first of all, from head coach of Melrose, Ian Chisholm. Look, look it's a game that we're, we're really looking forward to. And, uh, and, and while, while, while we did come off the, the other side of the scoreboard against Glasgow Aquis at the weekend, it was, uh, it was a very changed squad to what we've had, had previously. And, you know, we were winning with time up. And considering a late score going down to, after going down to 13 men, and again, the, the the Achilles heel for us has been around scrum time. It's a, it's a really key work on for us going into going into these games, especially against a team like Kelso, who look they're a good scrummaging team. They're pretty reliant on indiscipline and uh, the opposition kicking off kicking the ball off the park to get into their game. So the big focus for us is is around being really disciplined and you know having real focused efforts every time we 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 do get set piece ball. But again. Drawn to Peebles um, was really disappointing. We ended up beating ourselves through, you know, in discipline. It, it just let a team like like Peebles keep a hold and, like, and you know, teams that Graham Patterson coach look if they're they're in the game at sixty minutes, they're going to be in with a chance to win. And you know, we just felt we didn't make the most of our possessions and uh, in a game that we should have won. We need to put in a really strong performance against Kelso. We need to follow that up against Hoyk, um, and then and then our final game on Thursday the fourth of April will we'll be away to Jed. Like that was initially due to be at the Green Yards, but it, it's the Green Yards is a, a bit of a building site at that time of year due to the Sevens. So um, we, we we have actually asked to reverse that fixture. But look, really, really excited about, about this Friday. While we've got boys away, they've got boys away. It's a it's a good opportunity for, you know, some boys that are on the fringes to 
to get decent game time against decent opposition. We're hopeful of putting in a really positive performance and look, if, if we can do that, then we, we know that we'll be we'll be a chance of getting a result. Well, Kelso have a lot of players involved with the South this weekend. There's a few obviously playing from Melrose as well. So inevitable changes for them. Director of Rugby, Neil Hennigan. Short trip up to the Green Yards on Friday night to play a border league match against Melrose. One that we can use as an opportunity to give some chances to players that have been on the fringes all season and you know, if under pressure for many games that we've not been able to give as many opportunities as we'd like, so now's a good chance for that. And we really aim to field an under 23s team. That's what we're trying to do for our last two games against uh, Melrose and Gala, which are both away from home. So it'd be great experience for the younger guys who've been playing well in the Sharks to get a, a bit of a run out and show uh, Bruce and Kev what they can do. So um, I think out of the starting 15, around eight of them are under 20s age group um, so that's a massive plus for Kelso just about all the rest are, are under 23s, I think Mark Wilson will come in at full back for a bit of experience and then Charlie Marshall who's been recovering from injury lately, he's just been making his way back so he'll, he'll get a bit of game time and there might be a couple of older guys on the bench that can bring a bit of experience if needed from, from that um, side of things. But in general, it's going to be a really youthful team. Like say, Angus Utterson playing at 10, he's been having a couple of run-outs with Berwick. He was away at Dumfries and Burham Year the last couple of weeks with Berwick. And, you know, we've got to thank the likes of Colin Young and, and Paul Pringle down at Berwick for giving Angus that opportunity and he's learning a lot there as well so the environment's good and the players uh, Berwick uh, seem to be going well with Angus so yeah he's got a lot out of that so now's his opportunity to do it for Kelso if it wasn't for injury early in the season I'm sure he would have had more opportunities so far he, would, he was really coming into it before he got injured so he's one to look out for and then there's like say Duncan Smith who's been playing a bit of nine plays in the centre as well you know, Murray McGregor's back training at the club. Uh, him and his brother Angus will both feature. Ashton Asante. These guys have been training with the Scotland under-19s group lately. So, yeah, there's lots of opportunities there. I think Cammy Brown will be the sort of main man in the team. Him and him and Cammy Thompson will play in the back row. I think Cammy will captain the side. So that'll uh, be another opportunity for him as well. Uh, it'll be a tough match at the Green Yards, you know, on the 3G pitch. It's, it'll be fast and furious. I'm sure Melrose will want to throw it about. And, you know, really, we've got to go and do the same. We've got to go and enjoy ourselves, express ourselves. And as I say, it's a young side. It's a big challenge. You know, we're we're, uh, we're happy with the, with the chance to do that. Obviously, the South of Scotland uh, playing this weekend, we have around eight or nine guys involved in that. So, you know, our hands would have been tied regardless, but we've still left a couple of other senior boys out as well. So it really is a choice, really, to give to give this opportunity. You can't get better experiences going to places like the Green Yards and, you know, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll be up at the other day and it'll be similar. So great end to the season for these guys. Get a bit of opportunity and then they can enjoy a bit of seven. So, yeah, we'll look forward to that and uh, hopefully there's a decent crowd comes out to see some of the newer players that are around. Neil Hennigan. Now, Melrose drew, of course, with Peebles a couple of weeks ago, but uh, they're the only club still really in with even a slight chance of uh, challenging Hoyk for their title, which uh, they're looking to get their 51st Border League title. So, um, you know, this is a really important one for Melrose. Oh, it certainly is. And they, they, they you know, the, the cards have fallen, probably fallen pretty well for Melrose because they've got Kelso and Hoyk. Now, you know, let's be honest, if we're lo- looking at Kelso v Melrose or Hoyk v Melrose and all teams are full teams are at full strength and you're back in Kelso and Hoyk to win the game like those games all day long but they're falling on in their district weekend so Melrose have got a Melrose have got a squeak of a chance but Kelso this is a good test of Kelso's squad and I, I think it looks still pretty strong on paper and there's a lot of young lads coming in there you know I, I think there's something like eight or nine boys that are under 20 or something like that or, or still aged for that kind of category so yeah they'll be looking to put down a marker for, for next season and Kelso you, you know they're in a really good place they have been pretty much all season certainly in the second half of the season and yeah this is a this is a good test for some of those young players and Melrose have got a good chance, but it's going to be it's going to be a tough assignment uh, down there tonight. And yeah, here's hoping they get a fair sized crowd under the lights. 
Well, in the other game this evening, Jed Forrest faced Peebles in a very interesting fixture. The two clubs will be in the same division next season. And we can hear now from Jed Forrest's Paul Cranston. Jed's only had one game in the last six weeks. And now we're at the, the latter stage of the, the 15th season. We've now got, we've now got three, three Border League games in a row, which when you've not played so, so much in the last six weeks, it's, it's going to be tough on the players. But with extended squads of, of 23, it'll allow us to, to give some of the younger players that are coming up from Jed Thistle a, a chance to, to blood them in into the, the, the squad, which we, we desperately need after a, a very, very poor season by, by anybody's standards, uh, not, to, not to win a game all season. The lads are the lads are desperate to win uh, against Peebles, Melrose, and and Gala. Uh, no disrespect to any any of these teams, but uh, we'll be we'll be looking to target these games, and if not getting a win, getting a lot of confidence into next season. And uh, we're, we're we're starting to rebuild. Um, we know we need we need to start for the bottom and work our way up, and hopefully we can appoint a, a head coach very shortly. And uh, it will all start for there. But certainly these these three games, starting with Peebles, Friday night, under the lights at Riverside, the boys will the boys will be up for it. Peebles head coach is Graham Patterson, and he's got to get these boys up again after the big weekend last Saturday when they won promotion. Here's what he has to say this week. After the highs of um, Saturday up in Aberdeen, where we clinched that vital bonus point win to to secure the. The league, um, it's back down to to business this this week again. Focus shifting to now the border league. We have uh, two remaining border league uh, fixtures to complete. The first being Friday night against Jed Forest. So um, it's going to be a, a big test for us again. Um, just like we had against Gala and Melrose, these are excellent fixtures for us. Those two set us up really nicely for that game against Aberdeen and, and focus the minds and, and bodies for that game. Now it's about setting down markers and uh, achieving goals that we set out in, uh, at the beginning of the season to, to compete uh, well in the Border League. Um, and against Jed, it will really give us a good test of where we are. They're obviously not had the best of seasons, but I'm pretty sure that they will be focused on finishing off their border league campaign and, and looking to get victories, um, particularly against ourselves, I would I would imagine, and see that as a, as a target fixture for them. But in the same token, we're looking to, to target these fixtures as well and, and go into them with a, a real mindset of uh, competition for places within our squad, but also showing what we can do on the, on the pitch to, to other teams as well. Training was pretty light-hearted and, and pretty uh, relaxed, uh, just flushing out some of that stuff from um, from Saturday and the weekends, games and, and after-game activities. But then we'll get back really focused, ready for, for the game against Jed. They always offer a real attacking threat, so we know we have to be really good defensively, which has been a, a, a good part of our season in terms of sustaining defence. So we'll be really looking for the guys that are selected to, to maintain that focus throughout because that's going to be a benchmark for going forward in the next season is um, constantly being on your defensive top positions, you know, and, and just really uh, hammering home that phase after phase, set after set. It's not going to be easy. The physicality goes up, the intensity goes up, the skill set goes up. And now we're competing in that that league higher, and and this will be no different as well. Uh, obviously against Jed. Graham Patterson. Well, thoughts on this one because obviously the the big highs of last weekend. The, the you know it's going to be a bit of an anticlimax in a way, and of course that will be targeted by Jed Forrest. Yeah, Jed, looking for that elusive first win this season, and if and if it's going to come at any time, you fancy that this is the this is the game. Now, I'm on record as saying a, a few weeks ago, you know, when Peebles were really strong at the top of the third tier if you like and Jed were struggling at the bottom of the first tier that if I was a gambling man right here right now I, you know I wouldn't put 50 quid on my hard earned on Jed right now to beat Peebles well this is going to be the this is going to be the test tonight so it's a good yardstick for both these teams potentially to see where they are for next season because they're going to be they're going to be duking it out and Jed will be looking to recruit of course but 
Peebles upwardly mobile at the moment and yeah they'll fancy this tonight Well no announcement yet about uh, a new head coach or a director of rugby at Riverside Park but good to hear last week from Captain Clark Skeldon when I interviewed him that he's going nowhere he says Uh, doesn't matter who calls him he'll be there to try and get Jed back up next season and he he mentioned about the fact that you know some of the senior boys etc they've you know, they're, they're the ones who, who've unfortunately uh, been in a team that's got relegated and so he feels it's the duty to try and get them back up again. It's interesting that he says that and that, that kind of is what always is said when teams in any sport get relegated. You know, we, we took the team down so we'll stick around to get the team up. I think if there's one player that could be excused from that this season of all seasons, it's, it's Clark because he's shown up all the time. At times when you hear there's been hardly anybody training, he's been there, you know, thick and thin. It would seem, and, and for a you know for a number of years as well. And I imagine his signature will be in demand. Uh, services will be in demand for next season. So yeah, if 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 Jed can keep hold of Clark, then they've they've won a watch there. Absolutely. Yeah, and Gregor Law, if he comes back from injury and stays with Jed as well, that's a formidable second row. Definitely, and yeah, if. If Jed have got both of those players, those two playing in the second row next season, then that that's as good a second row as in that division. You know, that's a second row that is a top second row combination in the top division, let alone national one. So, yeah, if, if Jed can keep both of them and they can keep fit, particularly Gregor, who's had some horrendous injuries, then they can hopefully build a team around those two. Well, of course, we haven't had a Friday rugby preview because of the internationals in recent times. So a lot has happened, obviously, in club rugby. Um, just give us a little quick recap for those who uh, aren't familiar of what's going on, um, of what is actually happening with the Super Six clubs next season coming back into the mix in the National and Premiership Leagues. The Premiership is going to go to 12 teams for one season. Melrose and or Southern Knights are going to go back to Melrose, is my understanding, along with Watsonians are going to come into the division. In National 1, Boroughmuir Bears and Stirling Wolves will form part of that 10-team league and there'll be nine team leagues below that and then at the end of the season it'll all work it will all work itself out with promotions and relegations. We've spoken before, there's been some winners, there's been some losers. There's been a lot of chatter online that this is good or this is the worst thing that could have happened, etc., depending on who you, who you listen to. My own personal opinion is that it's about the best that the union could have done and they were never going to please everybody yep i think that's absolutely right there will be appeals i'm sure i, th- I, th- um, I was going to say Stuart, i think since i last commented on it borough muir and sterling have both stated their case and i think particularly in the case of sterling you read what they're saying there and you I sort of resonate with what they're saying and think yeah you, you've you've got a point there you know yes you did park your club team but you approached super six with a view that you have a strong under 18s you have strong super six and the under 18s almost bypassed the club and that and the club has suffered so you know they're coming back into a lower division based on what's happened to their club team and whether that's fair or not is you know for somebody else to say but i've, I've seen the statements from those two teams since then and i think they've got a, something of a point to be honest do you think there'll be any changes I've, I've, there's talk of appeals and clubs coming together to appeal this and appeal that i, I, I don't think there will to be honest I, I think the bed's been made everybody's gonna have to lie on it yes there's been those two clubs in particular that are going to feel aggrieved and there's other clubs that are you know absolutely cock a hoop one would assume so but yeah I, th- I think it's been it's been made the decision and i think we're just going to have to go through with it now and what will be will be but I, I fall into the camp of it's probably about as good as the union could have done yeah i agree with that as well well we're on air on rugby radio tomorrow at 2 30 through till five o'clock for a two and a half hour feast of club rugby and you can tune in at rugbyradio.co.uk or of course bordersrugby.net full commentary from edinburgh versus the south from stony hill i'm already licking my lips robin and dale will be in the commentary box there hope you can join us tomorrow but for now from Robin and me a very good night